This is my 1968 Mustang that has been sitting since uh, 2010 when the uh, head gaskets blew. Um, tried to fix it then, uh, but not much luck. Decided to go EFI uh, with a falling out with the mechanic. Not much luck either, so we're here and we're going to try to get it running. Stay tuned. So I'm lifting the car here because the transmission pan gasket is leaking um, you can see it all like soaked up right there so gotta lift the car put some jack stands um, I ended up doubling up on them because I wasn't sure you know even though the car's solid I, I'd rather be safe you know you never know with these old cars so uh, better safe than sorry um, so here I'm putting the jack stand I end up putting one right behind it next to it same on the other side The car has been sitting since 2010. Um, I just noticed now that the transmission has been leaking. Who knows how many years. But besides that, you can see right there where I had one of the floorboards uh, replaced, but I guess I'm gonna have to cut that myself, that extra piece of metal sticking out. Um, the car doesn't look too bad. I thought it was going to be way more rusted here on the brakes as this brakes. Um, but the wheels actually move still. Yeah, they're making noise, so they're going to need a pray everything restored, but at least they're not stuck. I got a uh, got here got to get these lines because these lines from the transmission they don't reach the new radiator <coughs> so I'm gonna have to get longer lines I mean it's it's not too bad I doubled up on the jack stands just in case you know it looks solid but you never know here I'm taking down the transmission pan and gasket. I had this transmission rebuilt maybe in the early 2000s where uh, when I got it back the flywheel starter was screeching every time I started it. So I sent it back, they repaired that but then I had a few issues with it then. Um, and then here you can see on the drive shaft it, it's kind of wet in the front at the tail end of the transmission so I don't know what the deal is with that. I guess I'm gonna find out you know once the car starts driving again but for now I just wanted to change the gasket stop this leak here and then you know just so I can fill it up have it ready for when I'm ready to start it up so here I'm just taking down the gasket <laughs> Oh man, I forgot to take off my head. I'm just gonna take it off right here. Alright. Uh, so 
put a couple bolts. Make it a, try to make it a little easier. Let's see if it works. Feels like it's working. Okay. This one. It's just to hold it up all the put all the other bolts on and get it started. I'm not putting too much pressure, I'm just putting it to hold it so you see it's falling anyways. Alright, I'm gonna get started. We'll do it with my Cordless ratchet. I'm not gonna tighten it up, so don't worry. Stop it right there before it even grabs. So that bear kind of pressure. So you can see it's still loose. Just so I can do this a little quicker. And over time, it seems some of these bolts were changed out. Look, this one's all short with a washer, doesn't look like any of the rest. And I gotta be careful with. I've never worked on the transmission in my life aside from oil changes. Why not in a cooler? I had a Grand Prix GXP. Uh, actually, had a cooler. If anybody knows those cars, they have a very weak transmission. Oh, push this away. Oh, that was my light, actually. Pushing it away just so. Uh, in case one of the bolts falls, I don't want to have to find it. Uh. Alright, I think there's the last one. Grand Prix, but it was a pain in the ass. Transmission, I mean. Also, had lift three issues, but oh, the car's gone. I, um, in case I didn't mention, I got this car back in '99. This Mustang. I was in the Navy at the time. My wife and I saved up some money. And I always, you know, since I was a kid, I love Mustangs. They look so cool. So I told her, hey, can you look for one? So the, the little bit of money we had, she went looking for one. Actually, she went with my mom. And she looked at a few. She said um, too many of them were like, Hot rod, so they had to cut everything out. And I guess my mom didn't like that. When they came across this one, and it had everything. And the paint was decent. But I mean, it had AC, 8-track, an 8-track player. It had a power steering, that, which they had added, because I don't think this one had from the factory. And um, 
And they bought it, 2500 Well, I think it was 2800 because somebody else was going to go see it too. But my wife really wanted it too, so she offered her 300 extra. And I think the girl was going to college, so she sold it. For 2800 and at that time, I was on a what's called a Westpac, and we deployed for six months around the world. When I came back, it was like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. It was my wife waiting for me with this car, and I didn't have a license at the time. So, but I wanted to drive it anyway, so this became my daily driver while I was in the military for four years. And I mean, I worked on it, like I learned how to do it. I was 19 at the time, so I learned how to do oil changes. Uh, Okay, I'm getting them all just hand tight, so just making sure they're all there. So then I can just start making it a little bit snug. All right, so I'm gonna start here. There's one, two, three, four. Two, four, six. Okay, there's only three. So there's that. I'll start on this corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, eleven. Alright, so let's start on this corner. I think that's tight enough. I don't want to break the bolt or strip anything. And from what I hear, I've seen videos. You don't need to do it that tight. Anyway, like I was saying, that's what. So, this became my daily driver, and I drove it, and I felt. You know, I was 19, I felt so freaking awesome driving this thing. Like, it was just fun. It was fun to drive. It was, you know, to be able to get a car like this back then for 2500 even then it's kind of, kind of a good price. You could even get a fastback at that time for that price. This was before, gone in 60 seconds, so. You know, right before it too. So after that, good luck with fastback. They're they're a little more, but they were. I remember seeing the fastback for around three thousand. Uh, yeah, drove this till. Driver, I got out in all three. Now let me double check them all. I got out in all three. I still drove this every day for a few years, and then I got another car because we needed a beer car for the boys, my boys, my kids, and I parked this. And I would drive it once in a while. If I go out of order, I mean, I uh, probably will. I always forget where I'm at. Drove this around until 2010 when the head gaskets finally blew. And not finally, I mean, they just blew. Which is horrible. I didn't know shit about I didn't know anything about doing that kind of work. 
Okay, so it's kind of just probably missed it. And <laughs> one of my buddies from work, we tried fixing it. We just made it worse. I don't know about the tightening sequences, nothing like that. But you know, there was, like, I wasn't, I didn't used to search on YouTube that much. Which I should have, and I didn't have tools that I used, so I just like thought you just had to tighten them real good. Yeah, that didn't work out. So then we, I decided I was gonna. I had a uh, 289. I decided I was gonna get a. Uh, a fuel injection from a 90s Mustang. That didn't work out. So we, so it, that engine is still in here too. It's a, it's a 302, 5.0. It's never been started. It's been rebuilt. So that's the engine that's in here. There's a few things I had to do different. So not everything is ex exactly the same for the accessories from the 289, but I think I can make it work. I think that should be good. I don't want to keep going. Uh, yeah, the gasket looks like it's nice and flat around there. Doesn't look like it's bulging out or not. Alright, so I kind of cleaned it up uh, by the neutral safety switch, like right there. And that's the neutral safety switch. I, I wiped it down because since there was a big old leak, I don't know if it was coming from up there or what, but you know, now that I kind of wiped it down, I get a better idea if it starts leaking again. That it's not coming from the pan. Well, I know it was from the pan before because the bolts weren't even tight. So I've never messed with it, so I don't know at what point someone started messing with the transmission. But um, you know, I got a plan need to do before I could turn this on since it's never been fired up with this engine. So we'll see. All right. This was in late 2000 around there. Uh, my wife and I were out for a drive with our little one. She was in the back seat recording. Uh, my goal since the car went down in 2010 was to immediately get it up and running. Uh, 12 and something years later, uh, we're gonna give it another try. And hopefully by the end of this, we can get her up and running again.